If this is your first leadership position, this is the first time you had direct reports, and maybe this is the first time you were paid to be responsible for other people, and all this is kind of freaking you out. In this video, I'm going to share with you three essential tips that will help you navigate this new and potentially stressful period of your life. My name is Catherine. I'm a senior product manager. I found myself as a delivery manager for multiple engineering teams, and then I was offered an opportunity to be an engineering manager. I'm not going to say that this journey was easy or <laughs> without obstacles, but there were three essential things that really made a key difference in my life when I became a leader in an organization. The first and most important thing for me that I learned sounds really simple. Just keep calm and stay organized. Nothing ever when you're a leader goes according to plan. No matter how well you plan, there's always gonna be surprises, whether it's like an edge case that you didn't expect but should have expected, or hey, maybe you just literally missed the most common use case for you know the product that you're building, or something just became extra technically difficult for no good reason. In my opinion, as a leader, the question you should ask yourself typically is not, how should I lead? It's actually, how should I lead through uncertainty and chaos? I had this friend that's a manager and no matter what happens, he is so calm. He is unbothered by the chaos around him. He is thoughtful in his commentary. You feel heard, he is there. I'm just the opposite, to be completely honest. A teammate on my team once told me that I'm a thermostat, not a thermometer. There's like two leadership styles, right? You can be a thermostat and you're the person that actually sets the temperature of the room versus your thermometer, which you just kind of reads off the temperature of the room and adapts to that. There's a lot of benefits of being a person that can set the temperature of the room. You know, it's great because when I'm excited, everyone else is excited. That's super cool. But there's actually a flip side of the coin is that when I am freaking out, I easily freak out everyone around me. But then the thing is, when we all freak out, who's making the good decisions? Who's being thoughtful? Who is the one that is being a leader and being present? This friend of mine, I want to be around him because I feel like he's this like rock in this crazy storm and I can stabilize myself around him. I feel like I'm making better decisions because he is there. So I guess what I'm trying to say is be that person for other people. Don't be like me. Be calm and help other people make better decisions. There's this really interesting quote that I really like. The mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. As a manager, mistakes, uncertainty, chaos, all these things are inevitable, right? The secret to getting past them is to stay calm and to consciously make good decisions. The secret to staying calm is to stay organized. Mise en place your work, everyone, please. I'm not gonna go into detail on exactly how to stay organized because I feel like there's like 6,000 videos on YouTube already about that. What I do wanna focus on is what I think means to be organized as a leader. I think as a leader, to be organized at a minimum, we need to give our team a sense of confidence. Confidence that there is a direction. Confidence that there has been conscious thought that went into a plan, and that when they're lost or they come to you for help, you can help them honestly feel like they're moving in the right direction. If all those things are fulfilled, you are organized, even if you have 2,000 tabs open. It's really not about a specific tool. It's about providing a sense of confidence that there is a direction, that you can help them follow that direction when they are lost. That's what being organized means. The second concept that made a huge impact to my growth as a, as a leader was really acknowledging the difference between influence and authority. The key thing that I wanna highlight here is that authority is not influence, everyone. Authority is something that can be given. You are given authority when you become an engineering manager, but you can't be given influence. Influence is earned. Weber defines influence as the power to change or affect someone or something, the power to cause changes without directly forcing them to happen. Authority is defined as the power to give orders to make decisions, the power or the right to direct or control someone or something. 
So they feel a little bit different, right? Authority can make it easier for you to gain influence, but it doesn't guarantee influence over other people's actions, thoughts, and opinions. And the funny thing is that the most impactful tool as a leader is not authority, you know, what you have actually gained through that promotion, it's actually influence. And that is something that you need to earn to be successful as a leader. Imagine this grid, authority on one side and influence on the other. If you have authority and you have influence, you're in a great place, right? That's where you want to be. Things will go smoothly for you, I promise. But if you have authority and you don't have influence, you will have the power to give orders, and to make decisions, but you lack the power to change or affect someone or something. They acknowledge that, okay, it is in your right to make those decisions, but I don't want to follow you. I don't agree. I'm not here with you. Having authority with no influence, it's not a nice place to be. It can manifest like, oh, I don't know why my team is not listening to me. Oh, my team doesn't doesn't respect me at all. Or, oh man, the team doesn't invite me to meetings where I need to be making critical decisions. You can also have no authority and no influence, so maybe that's a worse place to be. <laughs> but there's this last quadrant, right? You can have no authority, but you can have influence. In some ways, I actually believe this is the best place to be. <laughs> it's like, with great power, comes with no responsibility. <laughs> I think this is a really, really important skill set for people that are leaders to have in their toolkit. In most aspects of our life, right, with our friends or with our family, we don't have that authority that is typically given to us officially at work. But we still need to have buy-in from other people to do things. And I think that's where the skill of influencing without authority really kicks in, is that when you need buy-in, because it's more fun, it's more enjoyable, like to have other people with you in this journey but you don't have authority in that situation. I'm not gonna go into details about what are the things that really help me click on how to influence without authority. I feel like that's a video in its own, you know, and I guess if you really want this video, let me know in the comments. But I think the important thing that I'm trying to advocate for here is that if you are a leader, I think you need to ask yourself a few questions. Am I using authority? or influence or both. If someone changed their mind on something, did I force them or do they actually agree and, and feel like this is a good idea? And would they have made that decision independently if I didn't have authority? I think that asking myself those questions has really impact how I have became a leader and how I understood my relationship with other people and really shaped me into the leader that I want to be, a leader that mainly influences while having authority. The third and last idea that I want to talk about made a huge difference in stabilizing my leadership position in my career is to have a growth mindset and goals. Goals, 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 goals. There's three types of goals that I think are really important goals for your team, goals for improving your relationship with other people, and goals for yourself. What I'm talking about is specifically written goals that are ideally shared that has reoccurring feedback loops. It's really important to try and understand your team. I wanna understand why they're at work, what do they want from work? I'll share a real message I've sent to my team. This is a set of questions that I wanted them to think about and ideally write the answers to. The first question is, in six months, if you could be anything, do anything, or have anything at X company, what would it be? The second question is, how do you imagine the potential growth of your career? What are three distinct options that are exciting for you? I wanted to hear that if they didn't have to worry about restrictions, what would their dreams be like? If you are a junior developer, but you want to be a senior developer in six months, feel free to write that. I want to know that because that is what you really feel inside. I want to understand as a manager, as a leader, what that is so that we can work together towards that. People have very different ideas of how they want their careers to develop. I want to understand what are the possible options in their mind to help them think through what are the different journeys? What are our options? The second set of questions is really about habits and preferences. The questions are, how do you personally track 
your professional growth? How do you evaluate success? In the last three months, what are some of the things you enjoy working at X company and why? What are some of those things you least enjoy working on? What do you expect from your manager? What do you hope to get from your manager? How do you like to receive feedback? What works best for you? What doesn't? What do you feel like are your strengths and what do you feel like are your weaknesses? Once you have these answers, have a meeting with your team, go through each of those questions. You need to hear and understand how they evaluate their self and their success. Once you figure out those goals, which might take a few sessions, write them down. Then set up reoccurring feedback loops, like times in which both of you set aside your busy schedule to talk about these goals and be real about it. Are we meeting them? If not, why? Are they still important? Etc. The second area that I feel like is important to have goals around is potentially not commonly talked about, but it's about interpersonal relationships. It's around goals for yourself, for improving your relationships with other people in your company. In addition to being a good manager, am I a good team member? Am I a good peer to other people? Do my coworkers even enjoy working with me or they just tolerate me, right? If I'm not personally satisfied with my own answers to these questions, then the next question is how can I make it better. Sometimes I feel like I don't know my coworkers and I find myself asking myself, have I made any effort to know them? Have they made an effort and I didn't reciprocate? Sometimes I find myself getting annoyed, like why is this person being helpful? Then I think to myself, can I even think of an example where I was intentionally helpful to them? Ask yourself and reflect on your relationships with other people in the same way that you reflect on goals with your team being a leader means you're on multiple teams and you have to be a good team player on those teams. Am I being a good team member? And if the answer is no, set some goals for yourself, make some initiatives, create feedback loops so that you can be a good leader in the organization. The third area that I feel like you should specifically focus on is goals to improve yourself. Do you know how to evaluate yourself? What are your own success metrics? Do you know if you can do anything or be anything or have anything? What would that be in one year, five years? You expect from other people as a leader that they do their best, they grow, they continue learning, they hear feedback, then you as a leader should do the same. As a leader, you need to get good at giving feedback to your team, your peers, but you should be best at giving feedback to yourself. In the end of the day, you might not have authority over yourself, but hopefully you have influence over yourself and, uh, and this is the lever you can really move. What is that saying in tech? Eat your own dog food, right? Like, to go do that. These three concepts concepts were really essential for me in my leadership journey. They really shaped who I am and how I lead as a person. I hope that it made sense, one, and two, it helps you too. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.